Grab your nug and get chilly to do some grindage, buddy. We watched Encino Man and we are in defense of bad movies. Sam Bowen here with another In Defense of Bad Movies. I'm joined by the gang, Bobby Mattern. Hello. Laura King. Hi. Lauren Bowen. What's up? And we have a special guest defender, and that is Sarah Masters. Hey, dude. <laughs> and you brought us Encino Man, the <laughs> Polly Shore classic. Thank you. <laughs> we also have another special guest, a Mockingjay outside, Mockingbird outside. So if you hear it in the background, you might, you know, We're, it's yeah, singing along with us. And there's a Mockingbirds, a chance of cats and dogs. So we have a regular menagerie. Yeah. And we also have Mockingjay playing in the background. Yes. Yeah. So. A lot of distractions on this episode. Thanks, guys, for having yeah. me. <laughs> Well, we need to have you because you are so amazingly prepared for this. So you are the only one of our guests that she could have. She typed up notes. Uh, <laughs> you're the only one that could be strong enough to get through all these distractions. You are going to keep us on point here with your printout and your legal pad of notes. It sounds like distractions kind of go with everything because when we watched the movie, the we watched it on Amazon Prime and um, it was very pixelated. So that was kind of distracting. And when Laura, when you and Bobby watched it. Yeah, Bobby fell asleep. Mm-hmm. So, so like was, three times too, because he would wake up and then he'd fall back asleep. So I would have to rewatch scenes <laughs> over and over again. So I know this movie really well. It's oh. like, that's great for you, <laughs> huh? That's very exciting. That's Is you this get... your first time watching it? Yes. What a oh. treat! I was confusing this movie with Blast from the Past, even though that oh. one was a lot later. But I was better. like. No, it's great movie. <laughs> Not really. Great movie. Movie. A different kind of a movie. Different kind of a movie. You're right. A different you're right. kind All of a movie. <laughs> let's let's get into it. What kind of movie is this? Let's do Laura's. Uh, <laughs> Forgot 50, about this. You do it? Fifty. Oh, good. That's that's the best time. Laura's fifteen second movie synopsis. That sounds good. Whenever Lauren is ready to time it. All right. Let's go. Okay, so you have your main character of Sean Astin. I don't recall. I'm, I'm just going to call them by their actor name. <laughs> and you have Sean Astin and his friend Polly Shore, who's kind of a drugged out kid, but they don't actually explicitly say he's drugged out. But his nickname is Stony, and so I have to say that. And then they find this caveman, Stop. Brendan Fraser. And then that's a movie. <laughs> Dave, by the way, was, um, was his name. His name. Oh, Dave. D- yeah, I don't know Dave why. Dave and Stony. It was that was interesting. He was clearly a stoner, but they I don't know if they. He didn't was wanna... the cleanest stoner, though. There was no. I don't feel like there are any references to him using drugs. I no. think he was just spaced like, out. Yeah, I think he was just a weirdo. Like, yeah, he just needed attention. I don't think that he was Stony. Stony feels like a really over. So, like, he's in the... Growing Pains, there's a character named Boner, and surely sometimes he had to not have a boner. Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. You see that kid? I remember the one where they did a flashback where um, Mike actually names him. It's like Eddie Stabone, Bone. Boner, your name is Boner. I'm like, oh god, did we really need an origin for Boner? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, wow. Somehow have. not different from how I would have imagined it. <laughs> uh, and now the guy's a Christian, hardcore Christian. The guy who nicknamed his friends Boner. Christians get boners. <laughs> they usually don't nickname when they're married. <laughs> well, yes, obviously. And Only when they want to. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no other time. <laughs> So we digress. Yeah. <laughs> Digressed already. <laughs> I mean, the movie did that too, so we're all, we're all good. <laughs> you don't think this movie stayed on point all the time? You know, most of the time. No. <laughs> <laughs> what was the point of the movie? I don't really know. Maybe I hope we'll like get to the bottom of it. Fitting in in the world, I guess, like or in like natural habitat, Finding like being where you're most comfortable, maybe. Yeah, because yeah. I feel like. Being Stone, a good friend? Because I feel like, St- well, maybe. I feel like Stoney was, you know, the moral center of the movie. Yeah. And, like, all he argued yeah. was just, like, being comfortable with yourself, dude. He was, he was I, I actually thought the character was interesting because yeah. he, um, 
He was like the the typical stoner dumbass, but he wasn't a dumbass. Uh-huh. He was the hero pretty of the movie. Yeah, yeah. 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 absolutely. Sean Astin is presented as our main character, but it's all like, is the villain of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. He's horrible. Totally. <laughs> is a dick. <laughs> Just a he horrible goes person on the most of a journey, and so that was I makes does, like, he like, does he really though? It was enough of a journey after you know. I mean, spoiler towards the end of the movie, but some things happen. He has some challenges <laughs> that he has to overcome, and then he sort of learns. He has from a that. low point, and he says, "Okay, I'm sorry." And then he gets everything he wants. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the yeah. He kind of just lucks into everything he wants too. <laughs> it was that pool, man. That yeah, sweet that ass amazing pool. mud pit in the yeah. backyard. Uh, we are getting ahead of ourselves. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, it's okay. All right, so my defense of this movie, (laughs) and the point of the movie is that it is just meant to be a fun romp. I think that the target audience is teenagers, and it wasn't striving to be an overly ambitious flick. (laughs) (laughs) I think we could all probably agree on that. (laughs) And so I think that it succeeds on all fronts, and ends up being memorable for being funny. (laughs) For kids. I don't know if it's funny though. <laughs> Do you think it was a character? comedy? No, actually no. <laughs> I think it like the it tried to have the tone of a comedy, but it just wasn't funny in that sense. And I mean because they dealt with a lot of heavy topics, you know? Like, Lord, like bullying in, in high school was like a main theme throughout. Mm-hmm. Um fitting in was another one. Um I think these are very valid I was gonna say cromulent legitimately. These are valid <laughs> Tones you, the themes you can have, and still have a lighter tone. Yeah, but I don't know if the movie succeeded in the comedy. Like, I think it was trying to, but I, I don't know if there was enough comedy to balance out. I think we're also not the target audience. If you could ever argue that a teenager movie is actually intended for twelve year olds, like an eleven or twelve year old would think this movie was so funny. I think the made up language throughout. Yeah, um, there like, could oh, definitely be thing. more gack thrown at things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Eleven like, and twelve year olds like stupid shit. Yeah, that's what, yeah. I, that's what I mean. Yeah, exactly. There, there are so many. That's my... <laughs> terrible, terrible movies that Eleven and twelve year olds would laugh at. No, that's what I'm saying. They're great yeah. taste. Okay, all right, we're good. My niece is a nephew to watch this movie and love it. <laughs> Apologies to our 11 and 12 year old listeners. Well, no, obviously not. But, you know, <laughs> kids going over their friends' houses. They're all watching the early 90s high school films. You know how kids are nowadays. That's totally what kids do. That's totally what kids do. I can imagine. <laughs> Whatever's on Netflix streaming, bro. So it's a good thing this is on a pay view. Yeah, huh? <laughs> the movie... Definitely is for the younger set. The <laughs> intelligence factor is not there. It was the science factor. The is science not there. factor was not there. There's definitely <laughs> some <laughs> magical realism or just plain um, magical stuff that happens. It's definitely a um, inspired by the magical movies of Teen Wolf. I think it's or right Teen Witch, yeah. and it is very much lifting from just the '80s slapsticks comedies like a uh, Porky's. Or uh, <laughs> this came out in ninety two, right? It did come out in nineteen ninety two, and this feels like the last bastion of this kind of movie. Like I think you're right when you're saying it sort of built off your Teen Wolves and such. Like it feels like you certainly could not make this movie nowadays with this wacky, genuine of intent and just being completely ridiculous and impossible. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know what's going on with tween movies these days. Um, the movie, I, something that's similar to what could happen today is that it was more or less inspired by the character uh, that Polly Shore was already paying, playing this, you know, heightened version of himself, Polly Shore, the weasel, yeah. uh, which in itself was probably a ripoff from like characters like Spicoli and inspired by yeah. Bill and Ted, which Bill and Ted came out in 89. It was definitely so, an archetype that he was yeah. playing. It's the Southern California surfer dude. Uh, may, who may or may not be a stoner. Who may or may not. I think because <laughs> they're so playing good. they're playing at PG, he's, yeah. you know, they definitely leave any drug references out aside from the obvious name, but they make several allusions to an unhappy home situation Mm -hmm. that may explain why he acts out the way he does. Uh, He clearly needs a lot of attention that he's not getting from his mom. A dad never mentioned. (laughs) And and he's the one with a bad family, but if you look at it, Dave's family is not that much better. Mm -hmm. They are not good parents. 
they're there. They they're know. present, which is something. Their but. high school age son tells them he's going to dig a pool in the backyard, <laughs> and they say, "Sure." Because he's and when, and a good he was way into out it. With finding the caveman, he's knocking on the window. You know, his mom's in the kitchen, and she just shuts the blinds. Like, yeah. doesn't she's even on a care. Business call. Yeah. <laughs> These the, are bad parents. Right. Yeah, these friends have very similar stories that enact themselves <laughs> in different ways because the parents are just not there. <laughs> Dave's parents, they somehow allowed themselves to be snowed into believing that they'd agreed to have an exchange student. <laughs> I mean, and that's pretty absentee that they yeah. just let a guy move in, and it was quite clear he didn't speak any language, <laughs> much less Estonian. They all seemed, there was oh. no great reaction to the weird things he was doing. There was neither a, like, oh, okay, or a what? Like, when he gets down on the ground and is eating out of the dog's bowl, there's yeah. just a general sort of, like, ah, oh, okay. Maybe. The pairs are very uh, hard to ruffle. When they come in after the big reveal of Link has destroyed the kitchen, I'm fairly certain that I saw that the refrigerator door was off. (laughs) I think I would freak out if I saw that in the house. (laughs) And their response is just to sort of be ashamed that they forgot that they had agreed to accept this exchange student from the wilds of Mars, you would think. I mean, No one's reaction to anything involving Link makes any goddamn sense in this movie. Literally no characters. (laughs) Maybe maybe Stony because he's a little heightened, but like you even get Dave at the beginning just going like, "Oh, cool, a caveman. He can yeah. make me popular." <laughs> Let's what is the logic of that? The <laughs> well, whole I oh, think fucking melted. Like <laughs> it just nothing know. makes any sense in this movie. I, love I don't know. Re- oh, you go. You know. I love the reaction when okay, so they find the frozen caveman in the backyard in a single piece of ice, not connected to any great mm-hmm. glacier, but it had somehow and survived in Encino, in Encino. Like the valley, right yeah. where it's. It gets hot. And they put this in this... was buried under, you know, 10, 15 I'm, feet yeah, of dirt. I'll allow it. There's way more to get to. Sure. No, sure. So they put it in the shed because somehow this is going to make them famous and rich and, mm-hmm. uh, and cool and popular. And, popular. and he'll get the good yeah, girl. But cool. don't tell anybody yet. They assemble like a really impressive rig to lift him out of uh, the pit, too. Yeah. And then Pulley they, system, yes. They, they go to thaw him. Horses. While they're at school, he melts and Brendan Fraser pops out. Can't get to minor detail, too. They wrap uh-huh. they wrap the uh, the <laughs> ice block and then Sean Astin rips it off as if like he's like ready to be surprised by this reveal, even though he presumably he wrapped it. Yeah. Yeah. But then after it melts and Link is running through the house, he gets there, he's like, oh, he melted. Mm-hmm. That's the end of that. Yeah, the, there was no As body. if he melted and disintegrated into well, nothing. Not, not only that, but I mean, they there were heaters in the shed. <laughs> yeah. It's like they didn't expect it. They thought he would still be there. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you have the heaters on if you expected them to still be there? Come on, guys. I don't think that anybody ever accused these children of being bright. <laughs> I mean, you've got to look at the fact that they obviously have no parental supervision. This like, goes beyond And they're being bullied. I think that oh, they've no. got quite a lot on their plate, and this they're pretty. About, sing- Dave, at least, is pretty singularly focused on the idea of being popular to the this, exclusion this is, of anything else. Irrational but this isn't so. even brightness. This is object permanence that you seem to have a <laughs> basic problem. But Sam, with. you're also implying that they melted out. What they expect them to do? Of course, he ran amok. How is he still alive? <laughs> As we learn from watching Batman and Robin, if you are frozen for more than eight seconds, you die. This is, this is canon. How is this he is alive true. after thousands of years? <laughs> <laughs> He's perfectly healthy after being thawed. He looks great. He just needed a bath yeah. and a little bit of like every soap cleaning product in the house mm-hmm. poured into the water with How him. How good do you feel after you've brushed your teeth after a long day? And I think after is, having that never seen dentistry ever <laughs> and so imagine what a little floss can do they even put mouthwash in the bath I noticed <laughs> yes. yeah, I think that they even put toilet cleaner in the bath Bro, I'm pretty sure I saw <laughs> if being frozen in ice for thousands of years didn't kill him apparently bleach, bleach won't yeah. that's true it's just one big science experiment uh, he was black when they put him in the bath yeah I know <laughs> But they're taking care of him. He's like their pet, you know, and it's a fish out of water story. So they've got to take him under their wing and show him the ropes. It's a fish out of water story where the fish immediately takes to being out of water. Uh-huh. It's like, oh yeah, I can, I can totally breathe. Well, He's a very well-adjusted caveman. Yeah, yeah, a caveman is nothing but a 
you know, a hedonist, really. Because what does he have except for trying to make himself feel good and feel in the moment? And when he sees a hot babe like Robin Tooney, he's going to pull some acrobatic stunts. Uh, <laughs> oh, and, and the really? way that she just latched on him That's after not. he touched her, it was creepy. Well, she made very clear in the science class before that was dedicated to teaching the children about Cro-Magnon Man that she was totally into that idea. You so. guys, She Robin, wants to be dominated. Robin Tunney wants to get fucked. <laughs> hard by Brendan Fraser. Yeah, well, I don't blame yeah. him for that one. He, I, I, he was super charming in this He's too. Too dreamy, mm-hmm. you guys. I still he love didn't him. say anything. No, it <laughs> were He had Kenny's smile. Yet he was. <laughs> it's those eyes. He made it happen. That little droopy smile, guys. When he was walking in first day of school, I was getting like mad Edward Cullen energy off of him. He's <laughs> kind of pale and like slopey brow. He could have been a vampire. He, smi- he smiles. I was, well, yeah, it does, he doesn't look like everything <laughs> smells like farts. And when he talks, there's, like, variation. Yeah. But still. <laughs> and his skin doesn't glow, doesn't sparkle in the sun. Because you, when you find a caveman, you take him to school with you. And you enroll him as a student. <laughs> well, that's how they're going to be made popular, yeah. is by having this new cool kid. And you give the admin a sheet of all his vaccinations from an animal hospital because it's actually your dog's vaccination list. Wait. Admin does not notice. Actually, I don't think that admin cares. Her look was like this now. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. She just put it in a folder and put it in a drawer. <laughs> no one, it should because no one cares about student folders unless it's a villain breaking into the records in the third act of the movie trying to find shit on her. Like, <laughs> When was the last time you thought about your permanent record? Nobody cares. There is not one adult who cares about anything in this movie. No, <laughs> no yeah, that is what? sort of a, a version of the Bechdel test. Yeah. What? Oh. The high school, the, 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 the science teacher cares a lot about setting okay. up the rules of Cro-Magnum at the very beginning. <laughs> in this and class, the driver's ed teacher does He care really cares yeah, when they yeah, the, the car. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Guys, the science class was dedicated to prehistory. First off, it was a science lab, but then there are pull-down maps that are just about Cro-Magnon Man, and like all the evidence in the room is like, is this the only thing you study for a semester? It's a room dedicated to this. They're seniors, so they've seen your <laughs> Oh, I see. Can, can I ask, what was Dave's plan? No one knows. Because to me, it would seem like, oh, you unearthed the caveman, you immediately go to, to the authorities, yeah. and then that's how you become popular, I guess. But... What, was it? This is a pre-Instagram era, <laughs> so I think he's just hoping the, the 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 coolness of having this new factor. Because what do kids want except for something new and exciting? And obviously, Robin Tooney is looking for some you know something fresh. But surely the coolness is, guys. I thought out a caveman, mm-hmm. not guys. This is my weird exchange suit from Estonia. Was he later going to acknowledge? And by the way, you got all you were all punked. He's a caveman. See, that would be cool. No, that would be terrible. Fucking is horrible. He sort of makes the point at some small moments of like, we can't tell anyone because they'll come into pieces. Every time the writers realize that Dave just sounds like a sociopath, they're like, we gotta throw in that he's concerned that they're gonna chop him up into pieces for science. (laughs) But yeah, it was really perfunctory because the rest of the time, like, no, this is clearly... He did not care about Stoney at all. I mean, not Stoney, about... um, Link. Link at all. Never at any point in the movie. Until that one point where he... Where he has the Lauren called it the Lassie moment. The <laughs> <laughs> because Dave only wants this one girl, and this girl likes Link, and so well, out of nowhere too. I watched that, and I'm well, like, they went to that bar in the barrio, and they danced, and what's not to love? Everyone likes Link. But everybody they likes Link. To the the girlfriend of the the Mexican guy at the bar, and then he was interested in her, and everyone the, likes guys he, at Lear. And he's Brad, interested in everyone with gazongas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> This movie Nuts was are hot. Not Those girls are looking for a real take charge crow yeah, man. They're like, set so this, it was a scathing indictment of what women want. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so is Dave not taking charge when he walks up to her and says, Robin, don't forget we've been naked together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's the creepiest Dave moment. Dave is problematic. Sexy, right? <laughs> yeah. But then he gets her. Yeah. Oh. It works. Because they were, you know, destined oh. to be together. Up until the last those... minute, like, Link has been chosen as her prom. She has chosen Link as her prom date, and he's just like, oh, if you touch her. And I'm like, yeah. what? She's not your date. You, you've <laughs> lost, dude. And Link she's... lost his true love. I mean, when he wakes up from being oh, frozen in ice, so it's just moments after being separated from his love. And some of the most touching moments in the movie were yeah. when they were together in the beginning, him and his girlfriend. Yeah. 
and he brought her food and was going to make fire, and she... In the same, like, the same cave that and, Luke Skywalker encountered yeah. the Wampa in Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. Yeah. I was That's a little bit bothered by the... Link wasn't bothered by the fact that he was separated from her. And, like, at some point later on, he kind of... I think he realized that... He was constantly drawing her and being dis- yeah. depressed at the was roller he rink. Her? He was the... Oh, I bet you could argue that he was. Uh, yeah, I think that was what was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I thought that was just. I don't know how much on this one. I thought it was just any no, woman with gazongas. Was, well, but they made other people's gazongas made him think of the ones he was longing for, and that's why he attacked them and yes, tried to squeeze obviously. them. Obviously, his brain is not as. Do you think monogamy though, right? is big, a big concern for cavemen? I don't think it is. Yeah. yeah. Well, science no. shows that cavemen did practice monogamy. But in by the ending, spoiler alert. It's what science in this movie? No, but I'm just saying. <laughs> but by the ending, she does come, and he is very glad to see her. So there. Because she's be. in the same spot that he was. Yeah. She's frozen so under the. Her hair came out strange. much better though. Oh, Can I yeah, say, I, so I fell asleep and the first time I watched this movie. I was in and out of sleep, and then I woke up in time for that very last moment. I did not realize that was his cave cave woman girlfriend. Mm-hmm. I just thought Link just sexually assaulted some chick in the bathtub, <laughs> and I'm like, I mean, that makes sense. That's an appropriate ending for this movie. Uh, it would be because he is a caveman, so that is kind of what you would expect from him. But they want to have it both ways because they they want him to be a caveman and have these caveman urges, but they also want him to be a really sweet guy. He's certainly more sympathetic than Dave. That, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I think in, uh, there are exactly two somewhat sympathetic characters in this movie, and it is Stony and Link. Yeah, yeah. it's their movie. Yeah. I don't know what you're yeah. when they, sure. Because when, when they hang out, you're like, oh, this isn't like so bad if you can yeah. spend your disbelief. You're like, oh, this if cool. the movie was just a road trip between Stony and Link, I would yeah. watch it. <sighs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, when they went to Magic... Polly Shore is trying to get a sequel of the movie going. What? Of course, because what else is Polly Shore doing? Yeah. But what if it was a road trip? Because what is Brendan Fraser doing? Yeah. Did you know? Wow. Did you know? Um... We could check in with him now. Yeah, oh. for sure. He's learned all about our culture. What did he learn? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Link makes an appearance in um, Son in Law. The yes. Did you... I feel like I know what? that, and that's weird. There's a there's a moment where the, I looked it up on YouTube. There's a moment where they're at a party and then like Link is there with like a lighter and he pulls like a like a frog out of out of Polly Shore's hat and takes a bite out of it just like he did in in That's Man. the moment he, they chose to recreate. <laughs> well, Son in Law. The first part takes place in Los Angeles. I have not yeah. seen Son in Law. Oh, yeah. she goes away. She movie? leaves her farm and yes. goes off. To, oh yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> guys, <laughs> guys. I won't defend Son in Law. I've seen Son in Law. A lot. What is Sun? And then in the mid nineties, really doesn't know what that is. And so a young farm girl goes away to school. She's very nervous. She's very you know sheltered. And then she meets uh, Polly Shore's character in that movie, and he's Polly Shore again. He's oh, is stony that the one where up. they do the new they song? do the, they do the oh, American okay. Gothic on the cover. And, oh, and American he, Gothic, is, and he makes her cool, and like teaches her to embrace life. But then they go back home to the farm, and oh, he's crazy. Oh, it's Carlo Giugiani. Giugiani. Oh, she's so cute. You guys, I watched that movie a ton in the nineties. I really loved it in the nineties. I wonder if I could still defend it, guys. I like Polly Shore. <gasps> That's weird. Like, I know bad things have happened since then, but in this movie, it was reminding, like, there's a charm to his Do you like nonsense. Polly Shore as the the weasel thing that he's doing? Or would, have, did you also watch, like, Polly Shore is dead, and I think he did, like, a thing where he went to Africa to adopt a kid? I didn't watch any of that. I'm yeah. thinking, like, this the period, 90s? this era. This Are you just nostalgic age. for the 90s? It's not just the 90s, though, but, I mean, I did watch a bunch of Polly Shore stuff, and there's something, I mean, as we said, he's a sympathetic character in this, and he's got a charm to him in his yeah. nonsense ah. that he just tumbles from his mouth like y- he's you know confident what? and charming I like Keanu Reeves so I'm gonna give you Polly <laughs> okay. Shore so. alright alright you know I'm what? not saying I'm in love with him I'm just saying there's something I enjoy about him I've never seen a Polly Shore movie before this I kind of like Polly Shore yeah. I think too he, yeah. he was, he's really he's, confident and in his character like he was the most developed character in the movie <laughs> and charming yeah Boy, I can't. And now this is the time where Bobby says he likes counters. No, That's I mean okay. he's alright, but um, oh I can't God. go as far as saying like I like Polly Shore, but I, I mean I guess he's doing his thing. He's I mean he's not thing. doing his thing poorly. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's just, are you on, on board with this thing or not? Yeah, that's the difference. I mean, he took it from a comic stage persona to being an MTV VJ for a yeah. few years, and then they gave him, a, you know, a series of movies. The movies had diminishing returns, certainly, but they kept making them. <laughs> I will say, going while. going into this, like reading the synopsis of this movie, the 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 
two things that I thought were going to be like the hilarious weak points of the movie were Polly Shore and Brendan Fraser playing the caveman. I think they might be the only two strongest things in the movie points. that work. Yeah, yeah so they are the strongest points. <laughs> and guess it doesn't make any sense that okay, so this school is horrible to Dave and Stony. Like they're the losers, mm-hmm. and everyone mm-hmm. picks on them. It doesn't make any sense that Stony would be a loser. Like I think the only reason he's an outcast is because he insists on hanging out with Dave. Mm-hmm. Because who's he's, the worst? Yeah, yeah. But like he's because Stony's a weirdo, but he's really confident. He's really warm with everyone, and just like be yourself, buddy, mm-hmm. and like so giving. I think that he should be so popular. He should be that weird guy that everyone likes. Yeah, but he Could hangs out with be? this asshole. And, but he's thinking that he's taking Dave under his wing. Oh, I or, can imagine you that. you know, he's known Dave for a very long time, and it's obvious that Dave's family, while well, they're not very present, his parents do take care of him. You know, he's over there eating all the time, and he maybe thinks of that as a safe place from whatever hellscape is going on in his home life. I can only imagine his <laughs> mom. Oof. <laughs> Does she ever get up off the kitchen floor? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> I think he knows Dave doesn't have any friends, and he's such a good guy. He's like, I'll be your friend. I'll risk social leprosy for you. Yeah, he's taking care of him. He's a good guy. And that's why he takes Link, too, under his shoulders. And he just, he likes to help and guide. And I think that he thinks, like a modern-day shaman, I think, is what he's trying to cultivate, his persona. What he might think of himself. I like it. Not like that Dave... As soon Dave. as his girl likes Link, he takes Link out and drops him by the side of the road. Dave needs a shaman too. And that's <laughs> Dave, Dave calls calls Stony out on like being very self serving and only ever like looking uh, out for himself. You left me alone. And it Why makes did you take him? No sense. Stony's only into nugs, grindage, and chillage. <laughs> yep. He I was down. incomprehensible yeah. during a lot of this. <laughs> like Stony short. is only ever supportive and kind to you. Yeah, he was super cool. And he thinks he can take a human being. He's like, look, Link, it's not working out for me. It's not working out for you. And wh- Here's some loose change. Enjoy your existence. <laughs> no, the loose change was for the video game that he played one time. <laughs> he was very good he at that video game. game. A lot. He, he played a lot. That was a part of a montage. Yeah. Was it? That taught him how to drive. Yeah. There were several like, adorable that, montages. That taught him how to drive on two wheels for a very long period of time. They spent a lot of money on yeah. that special yeah. effect, right. and yeah. they could only do that special effect. <laughs> yeah. What was the moment where Dave did was like okay that's enough I'm sending you off was it was it after the bar thing Oh it was after the bar thing and he uses his one call from jail to call up Robin and say will you go to prom with me and she's like um no <laughs> okay. now, I want to go with Link but you could come too we'll have fun and that was when it turned and so also literally like I think literally the next scene is just Dave at home. Like, yeah. Yeah. his one phone call from jail didn't even matter. Right. Like, he was just out. Like, no, like, scene where it's like, oh, can you now use your one phone call to call my parents to bail me out? Or, like... I, I think he was under court order grounded. <laughs> yeah. He did Not say he was... grounded. When he... he he was on probation, and that's why yeah. he couldn't go to prom. It's tough to tell whether he was just saving face at that point. Yeah. Because well, he couldn't it's the next like he scene... He's in prom. Yeah. It so, felt I mean, like it was to save face because yeah. we want, what we know about his parents, they wouldn't ground him. <laughs> yeah, they did bail him out. Well, no, but somebody bailed him out. But he didn't choose to go to prom. He he ended up like taking the car to go. So he could just he could have been grounded, but he just left anyway. But he did it but to protect had, Link. And yeah. he and he had the party afterwards. So these parents are awful. <laughs> they yeah. let them all bring yeah. a bunch of high school back to the mud pit. I think he did it to protect Link, though. I think he did it to protect himself and Link. Uh, that's debatable. <laughs> but I think it was like the one time he tried to act selfless and it totally didn't fucking matter. No. It doesn't matter. Didn't. Well, I don't didn't think he wanted fact. to be an embarrassment either. Yeah. I dislike Dave so much. Well, I'll agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> he was pretty awful. There's like a there's a moment at the end too where Robin goes like I saw what you did and that was pretty sweet or what you did for him and I'm I, I'm at a loss. What exactly <laughs> did he do for Link? Was it that he went to? To save him at the prom? Like, what What did Dave do for Link ever in that whole movie? He defrosted him and saved him. Okay. And brought he him into the house. <laughs> he didn't do that for Link, though. <laughs> I mean, if there's any that, benefit, it was accidental. Four days. <laughs> he brought him into the modern 90s world. What's more exciting than being a teenager Ooh. in the 90s What's and going to high school exciting? in the valley? Then baggy oh, pants. Did you see Robin Tooney's hair? It that was, was big. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it made me long for Empire Records. Like, why do you have all that hair? Shave it all off. Did you see Rose McGowan? 
No, mm-hmm. where was she? That I was saw fun. that that was her premiere. Yeah, where was she, she had movie? she had a couple things. Where she was just a high school student that um, the camera like she was checking out Link. Okay, yeah, glorified yeah. extra essentially. Yeah, mm-hmm. but she had a couple she lines. Had, yeah, a couple lines. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. There were a lot of people in this movie. There was their debut performance, and it was the debut mm-hmm. from the writers and the director. And so, you know, and the, the end of their career, right? <laughs> uh, fairly, yeah, fairly, <laughs> almost certainly. Uh, the the writers did write a few things after George Zaloom and Sean Sheps. Um, Sean, oh. the one of the writers, she before this, she had a small role in the first Terminator movie. As one of the waitresses who works with Sarah Connor. Oh, so is that's that why, why they the, use... I'll be back. So, oh, mm. I, yeah, I wonder if that's why they did the nod, because that's, I think, the only movie that she was ever in, according to IMDb. It otherwise doesn't really fit. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. And she went on to write Son-in-Law and <laughs> Drumline and two episodes of Weeds. <laughs> uh, while the other co-writer, he did, he's produced family entertainment, like The Shaggy Dog and Freaky Friday. Uh, so this is definitely in that line. The director went on to direct Miracle on 34th Street and Flubber. The Robin Williams Flubber, obviously. So this is <laughs> leading up to uh, some other... Terrible things. Yes. <laughs> At least this wasn't a remake. The other, like the other two. That's true. It was an original property completely. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, you it, don't say. It did I spawn a, a spin-off TV movie, a sequel, called what? Encino Woman. Oh, oh yeah, that's a real thing. That sounds no, vaguely no, familiar. Who was in it? I don't know. The only there was me to find out, but there isn't. <laughs> Next thing. <laughs> uh, Segway. I love. <laughs> um, what was it when when uh, what was the what was the jerk boyfriend's name? Matt. Matt. The jerk. When name. he broke up the crowning of the prom king. <laughs> <laughs> His. How did you do it, Sam? How did you do it? I, I don't. I remember it was like over an over the shoulder look. And like he he gives the camera a look or you know toward the camera and he just goes shush. Oh, and it was more drawn out. Shush. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. tell the truth. No. <laughs> no. It was a shush. <laughs> it was hilarious. Whatever it was. He was crazy eyed and bananas and Robin tries to cut in and, and it was this big old shush from the badass. And bully. it was supposed to be like yeah this threatening thing and he gives what. I know. The they have a, all a librarian these will parental give you. figures there, and yet none of them step in and take he's him out. Not, they just let him go. He's running the show now. He's apparently. a super well, powerful before, puncher. Before Link appeared on the scene, that guy was the prom king. So we're talking about the Why? most popular dude in school. He's on the he's hockey team. Also a sociopath. And he's a big bully. So even the teachers are scared of him. He's oh. assaulted several people. <laughs> <laughs> he should then, be in jail. And then after he gets his comeuppance. Stoney comes over and gives him a big old born of a shush. Yeah. <laughs> they weren't even there for that part. <laughs> they ran in later. You don't think that's maybe just one of his lines? Oh, you think so? Maybe. You think do, that. Do you that think Matt stole it? From Matt Stoney? was referencing Stoney there <laughs> for some reason. Shush. Probably just his It would have been shush. <laughs> but, the way he said it there. And then the addition of the. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can't do it on this side, apparently. Why? Every oh. time we did the little friend finger thing, there was a fapping sound that, fa- that came from nowhere. I have to pull my cheek to do that sound. How did he do it without... Was that ADR, do you think? Or do you think he can do that without... Funny. You think he can just do it? He could probably just do that. Let's yeah. all try to do it right now. That was... No thanks. Okay, never mind. Right. <laughs> I have a note that says, in quotes, milk does the body good, and then I wrote barf next to it. Does anyone know the context of that? Because I can't remember. Oh, yeah, 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 they, were talking, they were talking about when um, Robin, was that her? The girl, yeah. 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 When um, something like she wasn't that attractive when she was younger, but now she's a super hot babe. Because like Dave knew her, you know, they were good friends back when they were bathing naked together, which who bathes? Like I could see you bathing <laughs> naked when you're that age with your siblings, but with... Just a, what a friend! <laughs> Their sense. parents were obviously very close. Uh, maybe yeah. That's why they were absentee. That's yeah. what they would do. They just throw the kids together in the bath and leave. But That's yeah. true. They downstairs. were always neglectful. But yeah, that wine was, time. That was what it was when they were like, "Oh, well, she's really hot now," and it's like, "Nope, there's a body good." So. Oh, he was so obsessed with her, and she, for her part, 
sent very mixed messages. Yeah, she did. She, did. Like, she was always really adamantly like, no, Dave, I'm not into you. I'm just going to run my hand up and down your arm, yeah. but she I'm would, not into you. Like, she would gaze at him as he, as he was yeah. gazing at her. He, and a lot she of eye would fucking. look over and he would eye fuck her and she would turn back to her sociopath boyfriend very quickly. I bet she was one of these girls that like she has to have the guy hangers on to make her feel, to like have the backup ready or just to make her feel good about herself. <laughs> You know those kind of women? Like some of the girls from the 90s movies? I feel like that's like a common theme in 90s mm-hmm. movies. Mm-hmm. Got to keep that one in your hip pocket just in case Matt turns out to be the big dick that like he is. They, they have that huge turnaround at the end, although this movie didn't have it. But, you know, <laughs> well, I guess she did. She took off his ring, glass ring, and threw it on the ice. So. Yeah. Thank goodness. Can we talk she about how until after the physical assault to say anything against Matt. That was so weird. That was a weird scene. <laughs> Guys, this movie has a great soundtrack. <laughs> it was so cool. You had your Motley crew, your Queen, your... I don't even remember who else, but it was You were really, really cool. enjoying it. I was rocking out <laughs> you with know, my cock and out. The, oh, That's not how that goes. No. <laughs> the movie had a $7 million budget, and I would say that they probably spent oh, most of it on oh, music oh, clearances. Oh, it was just to get the suicidal tendencies uh, super groups for the yeah. prom. It yeah. would have to be considering that they probably didn't spend that much on talent or scripts or <laughs> locations or anything like that. But you're correct. It was a rocking soundtrack. Yeah. That was as big a deal as getting Sam Ferris for the prom and 10 Things I Hate About You. Like That was a big <laughs> get. That was good. I bet Sam Ferris would be way easier to get now. So, even though the movie had a $7 million budget, it made $40 million at the box office. Good job, guys. Making it an actual hit, (laughs) especially for 1992. Simpler times. It's so charming. (laughs) Well, there were like three movies out, and you know, your local cinema only had one screen. (laughs) Well, it came out against Far and Away and Alien 3. Oh yeah! So, so it was the best movie out that those week. Those are disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you wanted to have any kind of counter programming, something for any kind of the younger group, or even just, well, I guess maybe Alien Three is a date movie if you're <laughs> weird. <laughs> yeah, if you're into that. And Far and Away is like 400 hours long. Did that <laughs> movie have an intermission? <laughs> uh, it had some great Irish accents. I can tell you that much. And it came out only a few months after Wayne's World. Uh-huh. So this is the atmosphere. Oh, okay. And a few this months the before era. the Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie. Get, getting uh-huh. that runoff uh-huh. Wayne's World pee, huh? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I really enjoy comedy. Bring me some more, please. <laughs> oh, all right. I'll accept this. <laughs> There's a really great exchange. that I'm totally going backward. There's That's a right. really great exchange between Dave and Robin where Dave um, reveals that he has found a caveman. And he goes, guess what I found? And Robin goes, I have no idea. He goes, guess, guess. And she goes, I don't know. And he goes, a caveman. And it ends with her saying, Dave, I just don't think I'm ready to handle a caveman. <laughs> good stuff, guys. We all know what a caveman <laughs> really is good code stuff. for. You know where there's not a good exchange? When they bring data from Goonies on screen, <laughs> he doesn't even talk to Mikey. That's ridiculous. Yeah. They found a pirate ship together, and they just ignore each other. Like, president of school doesn't even see the weirdo. No. It's so sad. I do hope that there are some deleted interactions between the two of them, because you're right, it is very bittersweet to see uh, Sean Astin in the background while Data is in the foreground talking to people. I... Suddenly, Data's the cool one. Yeah, for sure. Okay, for those of us who haven't seen The Goonies... Why haven't you seen The Goonies? Uh, I haven't. The um, Asian, he looks like he's... <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Not my kind of Short movie. round. No, I'm sorry, I'm too busy shooting daggers. Yeah, okay, go, go, bring it. Did you see insane. Temple of Doom? Oh, that's right. not a very good movie. What? Well, anyway, so he is the kid that seems like he's probably ASB president, um, shorter Asian guy that is on stage during the prom king bit, and, mm, okay. and he talks to Link a little bit earlier. Was also in Goonies with Sean Astin, and, who, who wants and they to do a found a pirate of? ship. Was there a racist impression of, no, who, of who, him who, in this movie? Who just want, no, who just wants to do it to show lower who he is? So, yeah, he's this guy who says this. You guys are booty traps. That's what I said, booty traps. You call him Dr. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> That's Data. Okay. Here he has a very regular yeah. Californian accent. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I wrote down here, and I'm not sure who said it, teach him how to wheeze. 
Was that Dave telling Polly Shore to teach Link how to wheeze? What's wheezing? I think that was something that was um, Stoney, Stoney said that he was going to do, is he was going to teach Link how to wheeze. What's wheezing? Which is apparently like eat a bunch of junk food. Uh, I, I don't know. I yeah. do not understand half the things no. that Stoney said, so I Absolutely missed not. a bunch of I understand more, understood more of what Link said than what Stoney <laughs> said. But he was just saying what Stoney said. <laughs> he learned very little language throughout this movie. He was just repeating Stoney yeah. and one sentence in Spanish. Yeah, he was better in Spanish than he was in English. <laughs> and I love this movie because culture clash was in it. And <laughs> no one in our audience is going to understand what that means, but the... I don't understand how things are talking That's fair. <laughs> but the three guys from the bar that gave him a ride home uh-huh. is actually a very funny and talented Los Angeles-based uh, Latino comedy and theatrical troupe and they've done lots of oh, different yeah, stuff oh yeah that was kind of racist oh yeah <laughs> but they're so. but they're like champions of latin culture so it, it makes it okay because they're amazing <laughs> and it was very exciting to see richard montoya in the movie they had a short was it TV racist show. because they turned out to be very nice they were very nice they yeah. gave yeah. that lady a ride home they were kind mm-hmm. of caricatures but then they, they flipped the script oh. by being totally nice yeah, yeah, yeah. i felt uncomfortable with <laughs> When they all, like, they helped them escape that really slow raid that the cops did on the bar that seemed like it was perfectly above board. I'm not sure why. Well, and there was no one there to check their IDs at the bar. And I love raids where cops come in one entrance and leave all the other ones totally open. And just walk in really slowly while everyone scatters. That was... Hey, hell no. That whole sequence was weird, too, because like, we were talking about how they play it really safe with, like, Stony and and not, like, you know... No drug references, and they're kind of they play it safe with the humor up until then, and then Stoney gets super drunk yeah. at the bar. He and drinks like, a lot. Does he really? Does he get drunk though? He doesn't. He, doesn't. he gets like pretty four trashed. Five shots. Yeah, yeah but, and I think that he's clear. He is pretty clean cut before yeah. then. So three shots is really going to hit that weirdo. But did he act really drunk? Yeah, I think so. Oh, I think okay. that was part of what was going on with with him after that, and then in the car. It's hard to gauge because he's yeah. weird already. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like it when um, the cops get there, and it was it was the cops and immigration because they had to have a reason for everyone in the bar to be running mm-hmm. away. Mm-hmm. This is a really oh, I yeah. They said yeah, like, they did it say immigration. Oh yeah. my god! <laughs> okay, that's awful. So it was both uh, both an alcohol raid and uh, you know like we're gonna get everyone who's under twenty one and everyone who's not legal here. And then when Robin gets dropped off, Evil Matt says, um, "Nice element you're hanging out with." <laughs> You live in Encino. You see this play. He's got to get his digs in. Oh, Matt's super comic and ridiculous. (laughs) He's very biting. He's a very good villain. He's He's a very villainous, very aggressive bully. He's a really, like, that would not be tolerated. And he's got his flotsam and jetsam. He does, and flotsam and jetsam. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Swim behind him, being Mm -hmm. generically supportive. Mm -hmm. And he says, some of us pump. And some of us slump. <laughs> Maybe if you pumped, you wouldn't have all that acne. Sean has a baby's he face. No, there is no acne. Matt <laughs> had more acne. Yeah. How could you tell? Because we, the streaming was very pixel. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Learn on Amazon streaming, y'all. They're not going to sponsor us. I know we kind of talked about this, but I have this. I note. got mine on iTunes, and it was pretty clear. So just to let you know. Okay. Uh, I, I, it's already kind of been covered, but I wrote. Nug, chilling, and grinding. The only things you ever cared about. Dave says that to Stoney, mm-hmm. which is... Does he know what... First of all, does he know what nugs and grinding is? Well, if he hangs out with Stoney so much. Yeah. You feel, I plus, don't know what grindage is. And plus, grind... Sno- Stony like totally cared about other things. He was a nice guy. Dave is the only one who doesn't care about anything. Yeah, Dave. he's kind of projecting. Is he pretty much the only thing that is Dave that seems to be concerned about Stoney, is the woman. Stony seems to take it though. Stony is like, yeah. yeah, but now I care, and I'm like, no, you haven't gone on a because you've yeah. been a decent person the whole time from the very beginning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think Stony is used to taking a lot of abuse. Maybe a little codependent. Just maybe he's so he's got some issues. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think he's willing. I think he's willing to take that abuse. Anyone who'll give him attention. But I think he also knows that Dave is lashing out. Dave is hurting. Dave's parents checked out years ago, and his little sister is mean. Mean as a snake. She's a bad little sister. Oh yeah, she would. She they wanted her to be fun, but she was just awful. Yeah. She doesn't really get an introduction either. No. She's just all of a sudden in the movie, and you're like, yeah. oh, he's got a horrible little sister. Yeah. Oh, I'm bratty. Okay, I got it. And then she's like in what? Like one more scene? Or like two more scenes? One or two. Something family like dinner. that, yeah. They have a couple family dinners, I think, and she's around. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and then let's not forget where um, 
Stony creepily tries to hit on her too and say like he's gonna marry her, which is so <laughs> weird because she's I think supposed to be quite a bit younger and well they never establish it but she looks quite a bit younger yeah, yeah. she's like eleven or so I I didn't it was a weird thing to say I didn't feel like he was hitting on you know like he wasn't trying to like just fuck to... her but like yeah. it was a yeah. really uncomfortable it thing was to awkward say. but. Any other big things before we move on to... Uh... Oh, wait, yeah, actually, uh, oh, yes. um, we have about? Link stepping on a rake and the rake hitting him in the face. <laughs> we have Link walking into a sliding glass door. All right, now we're done with my notes. We have Link wearing a cool <laughs> Say Anything coat. It was very oh, hot. Oh, yeah, we have him wearing a little, like, loincloth, too, covering them, just the strategic mm-hmm. covering mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was Not like for a, the ladies to look at, the moms who drag their punk ass teenagers to this movie. You guys, he, Brendan Fraser is beautiful. When he was <laughs> filthy, even then, even then, a little bit like sparkly eyed, and like once we clean you up, honey, you're gonna look great. He is gorgeous. There's a reason he was a movie star for a little while. Six <laughs> four, for a little while. Yeah, I'm full of muscle, and they totally had clothes that were baggy for him. <laughs> uh, all so, of the, his clothes were custom made. Yeah, what? because the costumer. Was yeah, she felt like she, she couldn't. His clothes and I think Stoney's clothes were custom made. That makes sense. I could see that with Stoney. Definitely, could have been nice. Oscar worthy costumes. Aww. She hand made those. An Oscar beautiful. eligible costume. So bright. <laughs> All right, you guys discuss gender politics. Go. Do it now. I got the eye of the tiger. Susan B. Anthony was on the dollar coin for a week. Stop objectifying me. Gloria Steinem. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Equal rights amendment was never ratified. Rosie the Riveter. Oh my God, Bobby, shut up. Rosie the Robot. Who's going to make me my sandwich? My body, my choice. Blatant. Blatant. Susan B. Anthony was taken off the dollar for a reason. Beyonce! Yeah, well, uh, females are not portrayed very nicely in this movie. Um, first things first. Well, you have the, the Stone Age woman. Did we, she ever get a name? Nug. That's, nug. Not, that's what we'll call <laughs> yeah, it. Cave, cave Nug. She's credited as Stone Age Nug, right? I think Cave Nug. Cave, cave Nug. nug. Well, yeah. Stoney does go, it's your Cave Nug. Yeah. Um, yeah, so she doesn't get a part. So, no, everyone, every single female in this movie is portrayed pretty poorly. Uh, the mom is one dimensional, does not pay attention. Well, we said the same about the dad, but um, I'm just going through the females in this movie. The sister's Brett. Um, <laughs> Robin is just not a, a wise person, and also she's just weird. And um, okay, there's kissing going on with Sam in the Lawrence. movie. That's yeah. weird. <laughs> um, yeah. I, Robin Tooney's character is sex crazed teenager, and I think most of the men are portrayed pretty terribly in this movie too. <laughs> no, not necessarily, because you have Stoney who's supposed to be like this philosopher, and mm-hmm. and um, and then you have you do have Link, Link who is just sexually harassing people all over the place, and he's like super charming. Yeah, I don't know. I'm saying that is a bad. I mean, like this segment is basically Bobby and Laura agree about gender politics. <laughs> I think it's very clear that we agree on this one. Could one of you become a little more misogynistic <laughs> just to make this more fun? Yeah, I think it would be I... fun for Laura to... Uh, no, I'm not touching that one. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're a big Trump supporter, though, so I, that kind of... <laughs> kind Guys, of... I'm sorry that Bobby jinxed us and to this point where Trump I is... I feel terrible. <laughs> ...looking to be the front runner for the GOP, so I'm really sorry about that. He is not... In... Do you really think Trump can win the presidency? He's not president? in the best mind right now. Do you, think Trump, do you really think Trump can win the presidency? Though? I don't know. I didn't think he could get this far. I don't know why Bobby's to blame. <laughs> because after all our podcasts, he would go Trump 2016. <laughs> oh. This is our new segment. Yeah, today in politics, we and we get millions of hits. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so um, just to let you know, everyone should vote for Bernie Sanders. Okay, feel the burn. <laughs> Anyway, statement is from Laura. <laughs> I, um, I, this is a politics debate. So. <laughs> we are spiraling right off the face of the earth right now. Lauren, did you find any? This is really that? awkward because everyone does not agree with me. I think I'm filled with a room with Republicans. So help this me. Oh, there you go. No. This new segment is Laura rambles about politics for ten minutes, and we all just sit and here smiling. Everyone keeps digging yourself in. For- <laughs> 
So Lauren, did did Sarah cover all your IMDb trivia, or have you got more? I mean, I'm worried that Hillary has a better chance of winning, and so I feel like even though she's I would won like... about all the big companies. <laughs> oh, my oh my god! god. <laughs> as far as I am, we need Bernie Sanders. I, I do IMDb trivia. <laughs> Um, there was not, I was saddened by the small amount of IMDb trivia on this movie. And as you know, I will not go to any other sources. This segment is called <laughs> I do BM IMDb, and strictly that. Um, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I forgot to do, say the name of the segment. The IMDb ID. Oh, God. I can't ever do it either. I do BM IMDb. IDO BM IMDb trivia TM. TM, yeah. STSF SV SUV. Um. So, Did you tell me to shut the fuck up? Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying in the segment. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so Jim Carrey and Nicolas Cage were both considered for the role Nicholas of Link Cage. way back. Oh my god! What insane <laughs> movies would those be? I want both of those alternate I universes. Even, how was Nick Cage like ever? At this point, like he was substantial as an uh-huh. actor at this level. I can't imagine him not having dialogue for that long. Nicholas Cage. <laughs> oh, he would learn language really quickly and just yeah. start jabbering nonsense as much as Stoney would. <laughs> wow, weird. And then wow. even Jim Carrey as well. Like, well, that's okay. That's the straight up comedy there. But I think it loses some of the endearment if he's not cute. <laughs> it would look more like a latter day Jim Carrey. Anyway. And then <laughs> the only other good one I had was, as we discussed, Data and Mikey. Uh, reunite from Goonies in this cast when Sean Astin goes up against Jonathan Kikwan. And this is the only time that Goonies cast members have ever re- had a reunion in a film together. What? So sad. Why has this not happened? Why haven't Martha Plimpton and Josh Brolin been in the movie together? Or... <laughs> <laughs> was Danny DeVito not in Goonies? No. Because I thought maybe Throw Mama from the Train had... Joey Pants couldn't ever be in a movie with Corey Feldman? Like, why? That's It's so sad. Anyway, that's all I have. Now, I'd rather Bernie <laughs> Sanders be president. I just don't know if he has a great chance to win the presidency. <laughs> and do you feel like he could accomplish a lot? Because he's so liberal. And even though that's really desirable, I feel like going against... Warren is Republican. Us. How dare you? <laughs> Them's fighting words. <laughs> and see, I think it's funny that Jim Carrey was considered for this movie. <laughs> because was he an unliving color at that time? Because he didn't really make his film debut until 1995, which mm-hmm. is three years in later. But he was in three movies that year, including oh. The Mask. But also Ace Ventura and Dumb and Dumber. Well, that would mean that out. those were all getting filmed before then. So maybe he was. I think he was on yeah. Living Color, and like he was probably out there then enough of a thing that he obviously was on auditioning list. for everything, taking yeah. every script. Yeah. If he was in all those mm-hmm. movies, uh, what a different movie it would have been with Jim Carrey. Yeah, yeah. But instead, the world will never know. Brendan Fraser was brought we'll, to we'll us. Listen. I mean, thank goodness. Yeah. I won't blame him. But fresh faced Brendan mm-hmm. Fraser. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, guys, let's talk about the movie we wish we'd seen. Ugh, this movie is crap. I could write a better movie in my sleep. And now, IDOBM presents the movie we'd wish we'd seen. You know where that is? It's where you take a bit of the movie, a, a side character or something you, that's not seen, maybe make that into a movie or a sequel or a prequel or something to that effect. Laura, <laughs> what movie do you wish you'd seen? I want to see the movie um, based on Robin Tooney's character, but a little more likable and a little less sex-driven. And kind of from her perspective to see like this world unfold. Or... That's one movie. Or to change the movie totally, that would change the movie totally. But then another one, which wouldn't change it so much, would have the cave woman instead of um, Brendan Fraser. So, Sevling. Mm-hmm. That would have been interesting. Like Dave, mm-hmm. maybe Dave just wanting to throw in the towel on Robin and just get with her instead. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. Like the cave woman, and they found her instead of Brendan Fraser. Right. Oh, and then, like, he wants... I don't know what you're talking about. I'm missing a joke, apparently. How about you, Lauren? I We've sort of covered it. I like the road trip idea, but I also want to see, uh, taking that idea even further, a sequel that puts us in contemporary era. I want to see, like, a My Dinner with Andre style, where Stoney <laughs> meets up with Link 
And it's years later, and Link has kind of gotten it all together, and he's a successful financial broker, and, like, Stoney's still being weird. So, like, they used to be friends, but now there's this distance between them, and just, like, a two-hander of just a movie, just them. My head went to, with him as, like, what do you say, a financial planner or something? Yeah. I thought of an unfrozen caveman lawyer. <laughs> yeah, he's a lawyer. <laughs> These strange voices in this phone are telling me that you should sell, sell, sell. Never <laughs> call sell. <laughs> That's what uh, they want. How about you, Bobby? Um, kind of going off of what Lauren said, I want to see like a prison drama oh. taking place like 10 years in the future where Dave and Link reunite in prison after Dave has gone to prison for murdering someone to get popular <laughs> and Link has gone to prison for sexually assaulting someone. <laughs> um, as for me, I, I, I like the road trip idea because I think that that was one of the most fun parts was when uh, Stoney and Link went to what they call them, and I wasn't Magic Mountain. It was Magic Mountain, but what do they call it? Massive Mountain. Mega Mountain. Mountain. Mega Mega Mountain Mountain. or something like that. So, yeah, I think that would be cool. It's not original, as Lauren said. They were so mean to that panda. They were really mean to that panda. They were (laughs) panda. Okay, maybe they are sort of villains. (laughs) They're teenagers. teenagers. And teenage males are sort of villains. They're the worst. They're pretty (laughs) bad. Either that or... Uh, maybe just like the continuation of uh, Robin's and Dave's relationship to when it all falls apart because he's just a sadistic Ten sociopath. seconds after he's the credits roll. Yeah. <laughs> so now you like the movie, Sarah, but what aspect of it would you like to perhaps see? Uh, uh, I definitely thought that Dave was one of the weaker points in the movie. Uh, he does not grow in quite the way that, you know, I a person should (laughs) in response to the stimulus that's presented to him. Um, So what if it was a movie where he was just not involved at all and it was just stony and he was this loner kid with a tough home life and his, you know, the earthquake dislodges uh, an ice block in his backyard and now he has a friend and it's a caveman and they have to figure out, you know, he helps that guy figure his thing out and then he realizes, you know, that he has his own place in the world and it's not the normal path, but you know, He's stony. That movie sounds amazing. Cool. <laughs> and there is no Dave or girlfriend or worrying about being popular. Oh, the movie sounds amazing. <laughs> Dave breaks the movie, right? Like, <laughs> you're, you're describing that, and I'm like, yeah, I mean, that sounds pretty solid. Like, oh, that's the movie without Dave. <laughs> Gosh, Dave, you ruined everything. <laughs> so, Sarah, you still like the movie? Uh, yes, I do. Even with it, with its problems, I think that it does what it sets out to do, which is just light, family, entertaining fare for the teenagers, uh, ripping off some of the sentiments that you would find in your general teen makeover comedies. <laughs> they even had that montage. Uh, now, Laura, you didn't like the movie, did you? No. Um, yeah, no, sorry. <laughs> How about you, Bobby? I no, I'm sorry. Did not, did not care for this one. Um, Lauren, it is not a good movie. <laughs> and saying I liked the movie gives it more credit than it deserves. But for a bad movie, it's a highly watchable bad movie. And I think that while I might not have liked the movie, I really enjoyed Polly Shore and Brendan Fraser, and there is an enjoyment to that. Yeah, I, I'm going to echo that and say it wasn't, there were a lot of jokes that kind of fell flat, but then there was some things I genuinely laughed at, and there was legitimate charm that Polly Shore and Brendan Fraser had, and the movie was watchable because of them. So, there we go. Anyone have anything to plug before we wrap things up? Plug plugs. When's this dropping? When is this dropping? When's this dropping? Oh, goodness. I don't know. Uh, a week and a half from today. Okay, so we can't plug. <laughs> the break show. No, sorry. No problem. No. Uh, but my improv group, the upperclassmen, does have a show on May first, uh, Long Beach Playhouse. Go check it out. That'll do it for me. Yay! Yeah. Oh, and like totally follow us on Twitter and and how's the website coming along? Well, I have been very busy sorry. lately. I but... didn't mean to put you on the spot, but just <laughs> no. I'll I'll, I'll post about the we'll post about the website on Facebook. It'll be up very shortly. <laughs> and check us out on Facebook. Yes, please do. And think that about does it. Good show, guys. Sarah, do you have anything you want to plug? Oh. Your Twitter or your uh, yeah. Instagram? Okay. I tweet at Sarah the PI, and I'm having a ladies' tea party on April 16th, if you can make it. What time should I come? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to bring your feather boa. <laughs> but other than that, I think that's about it. Yeah, happy Pesach, everyone. Aww.
Okay, sock. <laughs> uh, all right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. Bye.